And so we each have five minutes to ask questions. And I want to start a question to both of you, either of you can respond to. Uh, I think it's important if we're going to learn from these hearings and from life experience that we try to have an open mind. We, many of us personally uh, witnessed and were victimized by the events of January 6th. But we ne need to take an honest look at what happened that day and who uh, was guilty of wrongdoing. The most comprehensive look I've seen that has been published was by Professor Pape at the University of Chicago, and it's been widely uh, publicized and noted. He took a look at the actual people who were arrested for January 6th and asked why they were there and who they were. And he came up with some uh, startling information as far as I'm concerned. First, and this is not a surprise, the attack was unmistakably, he says, an act of political violence, not just an exercise in trespassing or vandalism. The overwhelming reason for action on January 6th, going after those who were actually arrested and taking a look at their testimony, the overwhelming reason was they believed they were following President Trump's orders. Second, a large majority of suspects in the Capitol had no connection to existing far-right militias, white nationalist gangs. One-tenth, only one out of ten, could be classified as supporters of these militia groups. 89% had no apparent affiliation. Third, the demographic profile of these suspected riot rioters is different from past right-wing extremism. Average age, 40. Two-thirds, 35 or older. 40% of those arrested are business owners or hold white-collar jobs. CEOs, shop owners, doctors, lawyers, IT specialists. Only 9% are unemployed. Fourth, most of them did not come from deep red strongholds. They came from areas that were carried by Joe Biden in the election. And finally, he concluded, what's clear is that the Capitol riot revealed a new force in American politics, not merely a mix of right-wing organizations, but a broader mass political movement that has violence at its core and draws strength even from places where Trump supporters are in the minority. So I want to ask each of you from the Department of Justice and FBI, as you are envisioning what needs to be done to keep America safe in the future, what do these conclusions tell you? Mr. Olson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman Durbin. If I, I would start, if I may, with your comments at the very beginning of this hearing. Um, what that tells me in hearing those statistics from the University of Chicago professor is that we must speak with one voice um, in condemning uh, violence as what, as what we saw on January 6th as unacceptable. You know, for our part at, at the Department of Justice um, and in partnership with the FBI and, and Ms. Sanborn and the agents within the FBI, our mission, our commitment is to investigate and prosecute all of these acts, um, any violence, uh, any unlawful acts. So Mr. Uh, Olson- Without I, regard to ideology. Mr. Olson, thank you very much for that. But the point I'm getting to is this. I'm not an expert in this area. I've read, and many members of the committee have read uh, enough to know how you investigate organizations and infiltrate them and try to break them down. It happened with the Ku Klux Klan, it's happened with others. But the point that is being made by the PAPE study is that if you just went to the organizations themselves, you will have missed the, the, the brunt of the attacks of the Capitol on January 6th. These people were not affiliated members of these organizations. By and large, almost 90% of them had no connection whatsoever. And yet they engaged in violence that day, sometimes uh, with unprecedented uh, uh, opportunity they've never shown in their life before. I'm asking each of you, as you look forward to try to keep us safe, are you going beyond the traditional means of suspects and people involved in this activity? Maybe Ms. Olson, would you like to respond to that? Uh, to Ms. Sanborn, but let me, let me just, yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, thank you for the question. I think you highlight uh, a couple things why we focus so much on the violence and uh, two things that I would pull out of your comments that I think are uh, congruent with themes that we're seeing and trends is a very personalized mobilization is often behind what pushes somebody uh, to go out and conduct whatever act they're about ready to undertake. And so that personalized nature obviously is very challenging 
But to get ahead of that, one of the things that we have focused on and we just recently published jointly with NCTC and DHS is indicators of mobilization, right? We want to teach people to pay attention to human behavior and become alarmed and alerted when it looks like somebody's mobilizing. We have found that is very successful on the IT side and believe that uh, educating people on those mobilization indicators will help us stay ahead of the violent threats that are out there. So I would conclude by saying I believe that these extremist organizations are still dangerous and keeping an eye on them and, and suppressing them is necessary but may not be sufficient. This analysis of the January 6th uh, insurrectionists and rioters tells us that the reach of this extremism is, goes far beyond these organizations. Senator Grassley. Mr. Olson, uh, your divine.